Well, it used to be you could just turn the lights on, right, and the electricity would come and you wouldn't have to worry about how it was made or where it came from. Today it's quite different. Our energy grid is in a very uh, delicate state and it's getting more delicate uh, by the day, it seems, with the disappearance of uh, more uh, coal-fired electricity power just uh, forecast or already occurred and the renewable build not keeping up to speed and uh, some growing doubt about whether renewables can indeed really replace baseload power from power stations that, uh, that use coal. So all this is quite worrying I, I, and a lot of us have become addicts of the various apps and websites which tell you what the electricity grid is doing in real time. So this morning I was quite alarmed when I saw that in South Australia at about nine o'clock this morning, 3% of electricity was being generated from diesel. And nobody wants to do that. That's the break glass option when everything else fails, but they'd obviously got down to a pretty sorry state there. Uh, to find out what's happening, I, I brought together, I brought in Rafe Champion. Rafe is an independent scholar. He's a founding member of the Energy Realists and uh, He's been following this stuff much more closely than I am. Well, well, welcome, Rafe. I take it that what's occurring in South Australia right now is what the Germans would call a dunkelflauter or a wind drought. And when you're reliant on so much wind and the wind goes down, you're in trouble, right? Wind droughts have been under the radar for an awfully long time because the meteorologists never breathed a word about them. Uh, and they didn't take much notice even of the dunkelflauters until they got some bad ones in 2021-22. Uh, the 21 was before the Ukraine war, but that really wrecked the uh, power supply in uh, Germany and Britain. They had to fall back on gas and the price went through the roof. Uh, and the same thing happens here when we don't have enough coal on deck, we have to resort to co uh, gas as we did in June 2021, 22, no, 22, and that sent the price through the roof as well. Well, I've got the app here which shows us the way the wind is flowing around Australia. We'll try and put that up on the screen later. But uh, basically the picture there is that the wind is blowing very nicely through the roaring 40s to the south of Australia and some of it is going up through the Tasman Sea, up along the coast of New Zealand. But very little of it is uh, being diverted to, through the Great Australian Bight to South Australia. Winds there below 20, around 15 kilometres an hour, it seems, across the state. At that point, the, the, the wind turbines become pretty useless, right? Well, I tend to look at the wind power output that, uh, without worrying that much about the wind itself. Uh, and I look at the situation at sunrise and sunset when there's no sun, and that means that it's all up to the conventional power sources, coal and gas, hydro, plus wind. And I always look and I find that practically every morning and evening, South Australia is not generating enough wind power to give you a hot breakfast or a hot dinner. Let's look at a couple of slides that illustrate what's going on, Rafe. The, the first one is the energy mix pretty much right at this moment. That's uh, from an app called Nemwatch. And uh, I guess the, the bit to look at is South Australia. That's the third one down. And we can see on there that right now in South Australia, more than half the power is coming from rooftop solar and about another quarter so about uh, is from large scale solar. So three quarters of their electricity right at this moment and we're recording this about what quarter past four in the afternoon is coming from solar. There's a tiny bit of wind there and the rest is gas. They're gonna have problems, aren't they, in about two hours time when the sun starts to go down. The critical thing is to look at the supply of solar and wind energy at their lowest point of production because that's the limiting factor in the, in the escape from coal power. In, insofar as the, 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 the effectiveness of a flood levy is measured by the lowest point, uh, you know, the chain's only as strong as the weakest link, the weak link in the so-called renewable energy chain is the windless night. No sun, no wind, no mm. power, no... <laughs> <laughs> well, they had one of those last night in South Australia. Let's call up the second graph and you, you can see it. So this, the second graph is taken from early this morning and looking again at South Australia, uh, they are powering the, the stuff, the electricity they're producing locally 
is about 90% of that is gas. There is a tiny amount of wind. What's not showing up there is that there is, as I said earlier, 3% is coming from diesel. But most of their electricity, well, I say most, probably about 40% of their electricity is being imported at that point, that's 7am this morning, from Vic Victoria. So what hope is there that any of that energy from Victoria, electricity from Victoria, is particularly clean? Right. Well, I checked that out. It, it was 70% coal. Yeah, you can see that. Uh, the, the line below South Australia, that's Victoria, 70% coal. So they're importing a lot of coal. So for all the effort and investment in wind and solar, it's not working, is it? Of course, they say that batteries are going to fill the gap once we get them in. But I, I don't know what you, but you're seeing on batteries. Sure, they're, they're, being, they're more available than they once were, but they're only short amounts of time and only small amounts of electricity, right? Well, I just happen to be a full black bottle on the battery supply. Mm. And if you look at the amount of battery power required to get through a windless night, it's in the order of, of 200 plus gigawatt hours. Gigawatt hours. If you look at the amount of batteries in the production line, there's about 60 gigawatt hours. If you look at the batteries that are working on the ground as we speak, it's less than three gigawatt hours. And you, co you cost that battery power at half a million dollars per megawatt hour. And as soon as and it's just, just absolutely, totally stupid. Uh, the, the figures just get astronomical. You run out of space on your calculator to fit the number of noughts in. So just forget about batteries bailing out wind droughts. Yeah, well, uh, the, ironically, of course, batteries are very useful to have now. Uh, but just in order to stabilise the grid at key moments, right? So when, when the renewables, the unsynchronised renewables start putting the grid out of sync, uh, the battery is a very good way of stabilising. Well, that's, this is a crazy situation. We spend billions of dollars to, to destabilise the grid and then some people come along and make money out of putting in batteries to, to trade on the grid support. Uh, and the price we pay is, is a whole lot of more, very expensive, unreliable power with, and wrecking the environment. I mean, it's just a lose, lose, lose every way you look at it. Because the thing is, Rafe, before 1979, South Australia's grid was independent. It wasn't connected to Victoria through the uh, Hayward interconnector. And so at that point, pre-1979, they had to make their own electricity, right? And they used brown coal from Lee Creek and it worked pretty well. They had some of the cheapest electricity in the country. It attracted industry. But now it seems to me, having connected to the Victorian grid, they've become totally dependent on it. There's a kind of dependency set in in South Australia that their, their, their own grid would not function for more than five minutes a day, one would imagine, if it were not for that interconnector. Well, they just went crazy about the prospects of so-called green energy, so they started to install wind power. Of course, all, all the states were independent up until like, around the turn of the century. Uh, There's a bit of power swapping between Victoria and New South Wales, but then they made the whole of the southeastern states into an interconnected grid, which they call the national energy market. And, of course, at that point, people thought, oh, well, we can all swap power around, everything will be fine, there'll be lots of power, but some place will send it where there isn't. South Australia literally blew up their, their last two coal power stations and decided they're going to go 100% renewable, uh, and now they're practically history. Mm. <laughs> Well, here's the thing, they're, they're, they're sort of tantalisingly close. They're 71, on my calculation, 71% of their electricity in the last uh, year was generated from so-called renewable sources. Close but no cigar, right? To close that gap for the last 30% is massively difficult, particularly when that is an average, that 70%. So, you, as you notice, there are times when they've got 5% or less coming from renewables and they need some other source. It just seems to me they're chasing their tails unless they put in some new source of baseload power. You have to stop thinking in terms of averages. Mm. Just stop it. Quite. Stop it right now. 
you've got to look at the low points. As I said, the, the low point of the flood levy, the slowest ship in the convoy, the weakest link in the chain. Just the, the AEMO has now got a, a tab on their data dashboard for penetration of in, intermittent energy. And it's up high, quite high, and it's blatantly misleading because it's not an indicator of any escape from coal. The indicator of escaping from coal is being able to get by on a windless night without coal. Exactly right, Rafe. And um, all the time you've been following this, this topic, <laughs> have they got any closer to solving the problem of what happens when the sun goes down and the wind isn't blowing? No, they have, they have, of course they haven't. My pumped hydro is a joke. Uh, there's no pumped hydro scheme of, of any size in the world that's pumped with wind and solar. Uh, the less said about Snowy 2, the better. It's just a tragic waste of 10 or $20 billion. I mean, you could have got two or three new power, coal power stations for that money and you could have reliable and cheap power 24 hours a day until we got nuclear. But we're going to burn coal until nuclear comes or we'll go cold at turkey at breakfast and dinner time. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody like you follows this, who follows the technical aspects of it, uh, rather than just the theory. Um, you're the kind of person who says, you know, we've got to... Well, it's all very well in theory, but let's look at how this works in practice, whereas, of course, I think Chris Bowen says the other way around, well, that's all very well in practice, but how does it work in theory? Uh, but you're, the, you're a practical man. You surely must wake up every morning and look at these apps and think, the whole country's gone stark raving mad. Well, of course, I'm a retired dairy farmer, so I get up at six religiously and I look at what the wind power's up to. And, of course, that's, the, that's when you look. You look at the wind power supply when there's no sun and then you work out whether you're going to have a hot breakfast on the back of wind. <laughs> So I want everybody, everybody, to look at their, the NEM watch widget on their phone or their clock, look at it before breakfast, look at it dinner time, have a talk about it over breakfast, over dinner, uh, get, get literate to the wind, get alert to wind droughts so that you can understand why this net zero is a suicide, very expensive suicide mission. <laughs> So there's a tip. You've got a tip for the day. We don't need to go on the Bureau of Meteorology <laughs> site to find out whether it's how windy it is. We just go to NEMWatch <laughs> and find out how much or how little uh, wind power they're generating. It's all about the power. Mm. It's all about the power. Mm. Rafe, thanks once again for bringing a solid dose of common sense to Reality Bites. Uh, and, uh, we thank you for all the work that you do following these... Uh, the details of, of, of the national energy market and pointing out the absurdities of it. We hope to have you back again Hang soon. On. A passing thought. Wind watching can become habit forming and even addictive. So watch responsibly. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks, Rafe, on that with that warning note. Thanks very much for coming on the show. Thank you.